I get a lot of questions asking me on how I do my thumbnails on YouTube. But before I answer that, let me give you some context real quick. You've got yourself an absolute masterpiece of a Roblox video that you've created, and you're in the process of uploading it to YouTube. But wait. There's no thumbnail in the video. You don't want to use the pre-generated thumbnails provided by YouTube. You want something that stands out. Well, that's going to get the viewer's attention. And no, I'm not going to tell you how to make clickbait thumbnails. You don't really have the knowledge on creating thumbnails, but you want to know how to make a thumbnail like all the big Roblox YouTubers out there. In this video, I'm going to teach you on how to do just that. I hope that this video is helpful not only to you, but to other people as well. So the resources that we're going to be using is Blender, Moon Animator, and Roblox Studio. Now let's say you've already got Roblox Studio open, you want to get your avatar loaded in onto a, a clean base plate. The program that I use, or the plugin that I use, is Moon Animator, and I personally myself enjoy using Moon Animator because of how flexible it is and how user, I, somewhat user friendly but I would say it's a lot better than using what Roblox uses. In order to insert your character, you go up on top of here and you click on a character inserter. And I already have my avatar and like a couple other people selected on here. But let's say that you wanna use your avatar. For a blank one, you would have to, on this little box right here, there you have to put in either your player name or your ID. And your ID is a little, the string of numbers that's there. That's what your ID is. You can copy and paste that onto there. But if you want to have, if you want to actually have proper posing and stuff for your avatar, R, you can use either old R15 or R15. I don't exactly remember the difference between these two. Whenever you get everything set up, you just click on insert and then your avatar should pull up onto here. You can close out of the character inserter and what you do next, you click on file explorer and you click on new. Doesn't matter what the name is. So let's just put in test and then you click on open now this shows like the proper this these are this is like the timeline for your animation but for this so since we're only going to have our avatar only do one pose and it's going to stay in one pose you don't have to do anything on this part now you want to make your avatar move around and stuff because you know you try to select it you try to select your avatar but then you can't move all the joints and stuff you say well how the heck am i supposed to do that there's this plus icon right here click that it adds it wants you to add an item you select your avatar and i'm not sure if it is like this on all the other ones you need to have your c-frame unchecked and include marker track you do not have to have that checked as well click ok and then now you've got all of these other items that are here and you wonder what the heck these are these are all the joints that you're able to adjust and stuff so i can make a quick pose for my avatar real quick and when we get done i'll show you what to do next okay now since we got this done and out of the way what you're going to do next, if you don't have it already opened, uh, you need to click on view and then click on your explorer and then this opens up this little menu. What you're going to do is select your avatar, right click, go down to export selection, then it will automatically try to save it in your local disk file. So it most likely could be your C drive or your D drive. Um, what I do personally, I already have a folder created just specifically for renders. You want to go ahead and save your your file as whatever you want to name it. So now since it's done saving, we can now hop over onto Blender and do the rest of the stuff on there. Now that we've got Blender open, what you want to do now is click on just general and then hit the delete key to get rid of the cube. And to insert your avatar on a Blender, you go to file, import, and then wavefront. This is the wavefront is the name for the .obj files. The hot key for this is W. You want to select the .obj file of your avatar. You don't want to select the .mtl. I believe these are these are just the textures for it. Double click on it or just click on import obj and then you're wondering where's where the heck is the avatar? Sometimes like in this case, it can spawn way out of way out here. That's where you click on the move tool and you drag your avatar over closer to the scene. You may also need to readjust your camera as well so you can see what your avatar is doing. Now you're wondering, well, why the heck is my avatar all gray and blocky? On Blender, there are different types of render engines. On here, I have already selected is Eevee. And this is the one that you want to have selected. If you don't have it selected, just hit the drop down menu and click on EV. Now what you're gonna do on the top right, these show all the shaders. You want to click the one on the far right, the viewport shading, and then it'll show your avatar in view. This little ball thing here is a light source and you can control it 
to your liking. And also if you click on the menu right down here, there's a properties menu where you can change all of, you can change the type of light. Usually I do sun, but whenever you click on it, it just blinds the avatar. What I usually do, I just change the strength to about 10 and then you'll be fine. Now this box thing right here, this is your camera. And as you're going to see here very soon, this is what will project your image. Now the camera is positioned in a weird way. So what you're going to do is go to this menu right here. It's the first menu in the object properties. You wanna go to your rotation X, type in 90 and then your Z angle, you want that to be 180 degrees. So then now the camera is facing directly towards the avatar. Now you wanna you want just move your camera to your liking. One more thing as well, this, if you grab onto the edge of the square or the rectangle, it adjusts the perspective. So it basically makes, it's basically how narrow the shot is. So whenever you're done getting your shot in position, you click on the, on the top left, there is a button for rendering. You click on render and then render image. Now, as you can see, my legs on the bottom is a little kind of clipping out just a tad bit. Oh, that's okay. Cause we can just simply move this. We can probably move it up as well. You may have to do this a couple times to get the image just right. Okay, so we've got the image that we want. The next step after we get the image onto here is getting it onto paint.net, which is the program that I'm going to be using, but it also works with a bunch of other programs like Photoshop and stuff. One thing that you need to do is instead of saving it as of right as is right now, you need to go onto your scene menu, go to film and then transparent. That way, whenever now when you go to save your image, it saves as a PNG and there's no background behind it. So you go to your image, save as again i have a folder saved dedicated to dedicated to these renders just go to wherever you had your thing saved put in a name to it i usually name my renders the same name as i do for the .obj files click on, click on save as image and then you should be good to go this is where the thumbnail process begins the recommended size for thumbnails is 1920 by 1080 so let's say that you were playing, hmm, I don't know, Tower of Hell, and you want to get a thumbnail on that. What I usually do, I just go onto the game and I just scroll through the pictures. Let's just say, I let's just use this one. You would copy the image and then go back onto your project. Then you hit Control V to paste the image. And then I would just stretch it out so it fits the screen. What I do afterwards, I just put on a Gaussian blur. And then whenever you get the radius just right, just click OK. This is the part where you're going to add your avatar in. Okay, now you go to whatever folder that you have your thing saved onto, and then you just drag and drop. It'll ask you to what, what to do with the file. If you click on open, it opens the image to its full size. And even though it was already set to 1920 by 1080, it's already it's going to get rid of the background layer. So I just click on add layer. It'll automatically add a layer, and then your avatar should be on here. This is where... Uh, you're only limited by your creativity. I'm just making a quick little sample uh, thumbnail. And then once you get your thumbnail all said and done, you go to file and then save as. And then if you have a folder dedicated to uh, YouTube thumbnails, just save it on there and just save it as a JPEG. It'll, all, it'll try to save it as a .pdn because it thinks that it's a future project that you're gonna continue working on. But whenever you make sure, whenever you're done, change it as like a PNG or a JPEG for the image file because that's what the YouTube thumbnail thing accepts. Whenever you get done, just hit save and it wants to ask you the quality. I usually have my quality set to 100 and then flatten and then now it's just one whole layer and then that's the full picture and then whenever you get done just go onto youtube and click on the box where you can upload a thumbnail and then find the picture and then upload it from there thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you learned something out of this i've had a bunch of like what i said i had a bunch of people asking me this about how to make a thumbnail in a con in the comments and i figured i kind of wanted to make a video on it because there's not that many in-depth videos on there there's a couple other videos that are on youtube that really gets the nitty gritty parts of like making the perfect YouTube thumbnail, but this could somewhat get you by. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully I'll be able to upload again here in the near future. Take care guys.